Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So in this video I'm going to be talking about Redis which is basically an in-memory key value store. Redis can be used as a database, a cache, a message broker and very many other things. So without further ado, let us get started by installing Redis. So right here in my Windows app system for Linux, I'm going to go ahead and set up Redis. The configuration is going to be so smooth. So the one I'm going to be doing that is by saying sudo apt install redis server. So feel free to install in whatever way you want, but I'm going to be using Windows app system for Linux and Ubuntu to make this simpler. So this is actually going to be picking the redis server from our repositories and installing it to our Windows app system for Linux. Now that our Redis server has been installed, let us go ahead and confirm whether it has been installed. So to do that, I'll just go ahead and type Redis and then server. And now it has started a Redis server right here. So I'm going to reduce this a little bit. So we now see that our Redis server is running, which is good. So to access the client, we have to basically run the Redis CLI command. So I'll go ahead and open up our terminal I'll open up a new tab so I'm using Windows terminal and Windows subsystem for Linux at the same time so I'll go ahead and run Redis CLI and this will go ahead and establish a connection to our server at port 6379 so let us go ahead and confirm whether our Redis server has been installed now to do that I'll just run ping and then this will return pong meaning that our connection has been established successfully. So now that we've installed Redis, let us understand what Redis is. Redis is the short form for the remote dictionary server. And what this does is to store our data using keys and values at the basic level. However, Redis is not just a key value store. It can be used as a database and the difference between it and other databases is that it stores data using data structures that it defines. So we shall be looking at some of those data structures in this video. So the first thing we're going to do is to go ahead and understand how Redis works at the low level. Redis is a server, meaning we have to make requests to it via a client. So the connection between a server and a client occurs through the TCP protocol. I won't talk about that in this video, but I hope you'll be able to understand that and make research about it. So once you establish a successful connection between a client and the server, now in this case, our client is the ready CLI. Let me actually increase this so that you can be able to see it. And when you establish this connection via TCP to our server, we can be able to write various commands to our server and be able to create, read, update, and delete data in our server. So we can also use programming languages to be able to do the same thing. So the beauty is Redis has provided a bunch of libraries and the community that can help us to write these libraries and tools that can allow us to act as clients or help us to write our external code on Redis to do the various things that we want to do. Now, in this video, I'm going to begin by the basic hello world that we do in every new technology. I begin by using the set command and I'll say set. And in this case, we shall set a message. So the message is basically a key and then you're going to provide a value. So in this case, I'll say our value is going to be hello world. And when you have this, I'm going to set enter and this is going to set the message, which is the key and then the value, which is hello world. Now, when you go ahead and try to get that specific message, we have to use the key. So if you're to see this command right here, what it's doing is to just keep a value or keep some data and this data we can be able to access using our key which is our message key so when you go ahead and access this data we are going to use the get command so you can 
use lowercase uppercase doesn't really matter so i'm going to go ahead and use get and in this case we have some nice auto completion that's telling us that we need to use a key so in this case when you provide the key so let's say the key we set is going to be a message this is going to return our value of hello world now another thing we can do is to set multiple keys and values so how we do that is by using that m get and m set command so the way you can think about this is when you have many keys and values that you want to store you have to provide all of them and set them so that you can be able to access them via the same command of m get so let us try this so when i go ahead and say m set now i'm going to be using african capital cities and their respective countries now i'm going to be using countries as keys and then values something like country and then the capital city so this is actually going to be the capital city so what you're going to do is to get a country and then specify the capital city of that country as the value so let us go ahead and do that so i'm just going to come and what i'll do is to set so i'm going to begin by setting the capital city of my country which is uganda and i'll set the value to the capital city of uganda which is kampala and then we are also going to go ahead and set the capital city of Kenya. So let's say Kenya is going to be Kenya. And here we shall set uh, the capital city of Kenya, which is Nairobi. And then we are also going to set another key. So let us set the capital city of Rwanda. So I'm just going to come and say Rwanda. And this is going to actually have a value of Chigali. And when we do this, when I press enter, we now see that all of these keys have the data that has been set. So let us try to access all this. So when you use mget, we are going to provide a list or many keys that we want to actually access values for. So in this case, we shall have to provide our countries. So when you say Uganda, and then let's say we try to access Kenya, and also we try to access our Rwanda and we can also get our message in this case so i'm also going to provide it in this case we see that we've been able to get all our all our values for the case we've specified so i hope this video has helped you to get a very basic understanding of how redis works and if you've liked it leave a like don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye